Jedi Lance, my name's Peebs, and today we are going to be playing Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action. Mm hmm. Basically, a uh, lesbian bartender, but it's in the future. Also, a fun fact Usprid means ghost in Welsh. I have played this game before. Glitch City 27X AD. A city that shouldn't exist. A tax haven where corporations and criminals' empires reign supreme. In this place, all human life has been infected with nanomachines to keep them in check. I can't read that fast. <laughs> Here, brutality in all its forms is an everyday reality. The quality of life for the non-powerful decreases at an alarming rate. For many, this can be an overwhelming. Some devote themselves to their jobs, their families, or even their studies. Some look for ways to escape this place, and others just give up. But for many of them, the answer lies at the bottom of a glass. On a small road just seconds away from the main street, somewhere near the slums, you can find the Hall A of BTC certified bull. But that's a mouthful, so we just call it Valhalla. A small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert, a fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. I managed to read that one. <laughs> and it's here where this story unfolds. <laughs> Alright. Well, welcome to Cyberpunk Bartender Action Valhalla, or VA11 Hall A, as it should be. I I haven't seen many people play this game before. It's um, do you know, what? new game. Thanks for playing VA11 Hall A. This game is the best played. Gets you uncomfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. So sit back and relax. We hope you have a good time. Yeah, all right, let's have a good time. Um, let me just, okay. Yeah, I think, I think I want it not too quiet. Right. Wait, what's scan lines? Ooh, scan lines on or off? That is the question. Hmm. We'll see. Okay, well, we've got dialogue here. Um, so, I'm gonna have to try voice acting. Yatta! <laughs> Alright, psst! Hey, over here! Boo! How's that for an entrance? Umph. <laughs> Come on, Joe, look sharp! The game's starting, and the player needs to get a good first impression of its main character. Oh, she's self-aware. I haven't, I haven't played this game in like two years, I think, so I don't remember any of it, to be honest with you. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend, and the ball <laughs> will eventually close. <laughs> tuxedo-clad corgis, what? And I'll admit, my little prank on you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brightest side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya! What just happened? Oh! <gasps> oh. <sighs> just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter one, Primera. That is how you pr Primera, yeah. Pronunciations. <laughs> Your membership's a shining fingered. What? <laughs> Automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup ad app. You can now browse the augmented eye. Click to dismiss this message. Ah. Oh, so who is that letter from? Jill, nobody. Okay. Holds to unlock. Oh, so this is my phone. Alright. Oh, this is where I can... Okay. Set music. Life backup. 
point. Is there anything? Okay. Alright. Uh, right, yeah, these are all my old- oh, I guess I played it in 7. I can't remember- I genuinely don't remember the <laughs> So let's start a new save here. Um, Alright. Um, augmented Eye. Mass emigration continues. Mass emigration continues as Quincy reveals new economic adjustments by Kimberly La Vallette. 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 <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to do this. With inflation rates among the highest in the world, constant shortages of basic groceries and rampant violent crimes, glitch city citizens look for a better life in other countries. Quincy, however, isn't happy with this. They learn in our schools and university, the Prime Minister said during a talk with the augmented eye, but they apply that they learn somewhere else and I find it rather insulting. This comes after revealing new economic measures for the city, which most analysts consider to be useless for the current environment. They don't know shit, included <laughs> Quincy. <laughs> Alright. So, um, this game is very chillaxed, I would say. It's such a fucking casual game. Like, it's mostly just fucking talking and reading. There's a lot of reading to do. And. Yeah, I thought for a for, for a first game to play, it's ideal. <laughs> Wonderland is the newest threat to your security by Kimberly Lavalette. Oh, same person. If you thought Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. They've yet to make an impact as big as Alice Rabbit, but they seem to be aiming very high with the recent threats issued against Prime Minister Quincy. We have full access to Quincy's email network and we'll release the whole database this January, a, the group declared during a stream. Shallow threats. When questioned, Prime Minister Quincy dismissed all the group's threats by stating he's not hiding anything and is not afraid of possible leak of his email history. Maybe everyone will get to see what kind of TV I bought last month. Wild parties. The people behind the Wonderlanders seem to enjoy dressing in all kinds of rabbit costumes during the stream, from the anthro to a bunny girl. Ooh, this is one scary group. <laughs> the purpose was to show the love and respect they have for the Alice Rabbit and their role in today's politics. We want to follow their example while having some fun. We're not sure if this will go anywhere, but we'll be there to tell you if it does. I wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. I can't remember who Alma is. I think vaguely I remember her. Cyborg and Heels returns next year. Cyborg and Heels returns next year to the Super Silver Thunderdome by Lana Smithy. The popular show Cyborg and Heels returns to the dome this March with tickets going on sale in January. Cyborg and Heels is a massive stage show about cyborg fighting terrorism while wearing heels. Director Quinton Hayter <laughs> explains Cyborg and Heels special. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> you know, during the exclusive interview with or the organ to die. What's not to love about it? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff. That's literally something we've never seen before. A niche market I'm willing to capitalize on. <laughs> Check out the full interview in the next week's exclusively here at the Augmented Eye. Okay. So obviously I've got some apps I can load, but I don't have them yet. Um, so, and I think we're done for today so let's go to work tuesday december 13th good evening so jill gil gil jill um will i guess have my voice <laughs> ah this guy ah he's a fucking soy boy <laughs> that's what i remember hi there hey there jill i'm very bad at voices oh hey john um when will you admit that you have a John face? Jill? <laughs> Jill and Jill. Oh, is it? Okay. When you let people call you Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's boss? Don't know. She went to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I just told you? You said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing, I'm just thinking about stuff. 
What stuff? Well, I have to pay the rent by the 30th, which is always stressful and... Ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to- Whoa, okay. A. A. Oh yeah, you can- Cool. Oh, I like that one. Wait, let me just- <laughs> Oh, that one's pretty. Okay. Uh, I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. Not to mention the fact that two days ago I found the bar is at risk of closing. Ah. So not only is my life being shaken up, but I'm apparently going crazy. Let me turn the actual volume down. Yeah. On top of that, neutering 4 left me with a completely empty wallet and I'll get evicted if I miss the rent again. And there are all the beer cans around my apartment and... Jill! Sorry, do you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. Unpf. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Piano man. Let's start with a sugar rush. I'm gonna fucking go straight to piano man, so I remember how this works. Alright. Uh, yep. Yeah. Tutorial. Jill! Well done. Press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button on the drink. I'm assuming it will Oh, but if your drink looks messed up, you'll need to press the reset button and then try again. You can press reset at any time, even while a shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. Jill, I'm the one that went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. <sighs> piano man. Uh, let's go. Piano man. Okay, to Adelheid. <laughs> Three bronze accent, five, five, five flannel guide, three, uh, all on the rocks, and mix. Boom. <laughs> I'm the fucking best at making drinks. <laughs> Here, happy? Yes, very. I stand corrected. Now, let's get working. Oh yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can non of or fill it to the brim. Optional carmatrine doesn't amount towards making a big drink, of course. Carmatrine is an alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exhibi ex ooh, exposition? <laughs> oh, I am, yeah. Hey, guys! Oh, bot! Ah, uh. uh, okay. The boss needs a fucking radical ass voice. Ah, uh, I'll think of something. <clears throat> Who's that? I don't know, I found her while I was sh shopping. Nah, that's not a cool voice. <laughs> I'm very terrible at voices. Why bring her here? Well, it was either we leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest or bring her unconscious body in here. She's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know that. That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. <laughs> there are two of you. Believe in yourselves. <sighs> Do you think Chief knocked her out? <laughs> nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick up on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. Yes, I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? While you spent the whole weekend and Monday doing god knows what, we've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs. Lots of them. You're joking. Jill. You've known me for how long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well. So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that and my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that? Fine. I see no problem. 
Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. Fine. <laughs> with that out of the way, let's play some music with new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled in with songs before it can start. I wonder what was the logic behind the decision. Ooh, okay, let's go for some chill ass fucking. Because this game, you can choose the music that you want. Ready. Nice. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Okay, you're interesting. Look at your fucking mustache. Yo, you could fucking kill someone with that mustache. And those eyes. Wait, I just want to see. Does it look better with the scan lines? It's very, it's very clear without them. Hmm. Hmm. This is very important, alright? Okay, we'll, we'll go off for now. <clears throat> hey you, get me a beer. Oh, sure. Right on it. He wants a beer. He looks quite the big guy, though. Uh, beer. One. Unos dos. Unos. Unos dos. Unos, dos, tres, cuatros. <laughs> See, it says he looks like quite the big guy though. So, um, do I double it? And make it a big boy beer? Do you think that'll make him happy? Let's go for it. Fuck it, why not? Uh, two, uh, one, two, one, two, three. Big beer. Here you go. Yeah, this one's good. Pretty good, in fact. Nice job. Um, thanks, I guess. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence like mine. Mm. <laughs> I immediately want to slap him. <laughs> Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like New Jersey 3. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> New Jersey 3. Huh. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. I read so many articles by you previously, just a second ago. I should have got a drink before doing this. <laughs> Nothing gets published here without- there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting flirt fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then. Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about the urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's. That's the kind of corny shit that brings to the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks brings money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just the fact that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it, my interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalising on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker, but not all of the daily stories about murders and other horrors. Well, I always filter out that section, I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as it is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get... Dis... Dis... People get bored of... <laughs> I relate to this guy. <laughs> people get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Hmm. Hmm. 
sick times. See, like, this is actually a reflection of our own society, I think. Not to get, like, all political and shit. I'm just gonna adjust myself. <laughs> Sorry, if my mic is loud. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. Right, right. There we go. They're easy to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot and even people like you who avoid the murder stories will see them. <laughs> that brings money and like I said, money's good. Huh, I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part about that is they know half of our clicks come from them, so they all get all diva-like on my ass. <laughs> I think you're being too harsh. What about- No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the comments on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column, um, uh, shit, forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... that kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less, hit less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visited. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard and gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here and asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Again, beer again. This man likes his beers. They come cheaper in bulk at the store, though. Yeah, because I have to make them. Like, I mean, this game really doesn't make sense because, like, <laughs> beer takes ages to make. Anyhow, well, I guess I can understand why cocktails are made here, but you should just be able to get, like, a can. Should I make a big one for him as well? Yeah, well, let's get him fucking drunk. <laughs> Why not? We might get some juicy goss out of him. One, two, three, four. Next up, yeah. I actually find this whole game mechanic really satisfying as well. I know, it just it just reminds me of like when those cooking games you get like um, the ones where you have to make drinks really quickly and food really drink quickly. <laughs> the ones you'd play when you're like really small. Here. Ah, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? <laughs> Do you, I really want to hate him, but he's got his fucking chance. <laughs> right. <laughs> so tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. <laughs> Here's the point. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. <laughs> Who's that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm assaulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell, rather than a hellish hole, if you like. Charming. <laughs> so, celebrities. Not really. At least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. <laughs> and second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people, especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer to get their com 
com- oh, comeuppance for daring to be such more so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip, goth. <laughs> gossip. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. <laughs> you thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I fail to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating god knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. It is. (laughs) Jill has the right opinions. Oh please, as a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers, this sounds hypocritical coming from you. Uh, Even if that's the case, I don't sensationalise what people do. Mm -mm. I don't make it more than that person you know from the TV acts like a human. Sensationalise is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, those people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that all that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. <laughs> Do you know, this is actually very really true, you know, and, um, I think it the guy who plays that asshole from Game of Thrones, I don't watch Game of Thrones. And he was getting fucking hate mail, but he was fucking loving it. He loves getting the hate mail. And it was also this British actor who, like, he put on weight and just to play this bad guy character. And he gets hate mail now and he's a really nice guy. <laughs> and I felt so sorry for him because it's just the role he decided to play and he isn't really an asshole. Oh, yeah. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help sensationalising everything. It feels like they're instigating a behaviour that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? She does. <laughs> I have to say them. Well, two can play that game of... <clears throat> Unf, I meant. <laughs> hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hellbent on world conquest. <laughs> Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. This guy, this guy knows his shit. Anyway, I just realised that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like the column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. <laughs> People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender, a personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting, half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person? (gasps) I like Lana Smithy. (laughs) I've just figured- (laughs) Figures. I've just realised who she is. She's everyone. Anyway, eventually the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients write about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess, but more importantly, me. (laughs) Well, if you ever retire, the offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me in two weeks from now. (laughs) Girl boy, he's too big for this. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Did did I say something wrong? Not at all, I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just a title, it's too impersonal and cold. 
it is. <laughs> Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general, but Mr. Donovan. Now that's more like it. They're referring to me. To the man in front of them. Not to my family. Not to my position as boss. To me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? <laughs> <laughs> Personal. <laughs> oh gods no, but I want them to fear me. <laughs> Not because I'm the boss or the name appearing on the paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread in them. <laughs> Starting tomorrow I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh yeah, you were asking something? What was it? Drink. Another one. Do you? Ah oh, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. Alright. Third time's a charm for what? Anyway, better get him that beer. Let's go big. Let's go big. I'm wasting resources. Hell yeah. One, two. One, two, three, four. I did do it, yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> One beer. Here's hoping I don't pass out. Cheers. Moin health. I mean, enjoy. Say, kid. Does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole. <laughs> we have character development. <laughs> there was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, nah. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. What's on, the, what's on TV? No signal. <laughs> Has he zero? Cool. We watch, we protect. Let's get some fucking 59.99. Jesus Christ. I guess inflation's gone up. <laughs> Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Jeez. Those bosses think they're so important because they put their money in the company. <laughs> what? I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kind of organisations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers are asked for meetings. Mm-mm. Meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they find offensive, and then there's always that one guy or gal that says, Hey, why don't you do that what the other newspaper does? Recently they told me that they needed more clicks. MORE CLICKS! I make sure to keep that stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's still never enough to them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks, I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Should I be worried? Nah. At least he paid before storming off. I wonder what happened with Sven, though. We never heard from him again. Jill! Yes? What the hell happened in that bathroom? What kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs? <laughs> Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The ceiling. The sinks. The toilets. The vents. Shh. You'll wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this! Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I. Big gut punch. Fast. Alright. He wants a gut punch. I want to give him a gut punch, alright. He's a bit of an asshole. Oh, he wants a big gut punch. But big boy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Unos dos. Optional. Ooh, should we get him drunk? Let's put a bit in, not too much. <laughs> um, all aged and mixed. Gut punch. 
here. Hmm. You can actually do it then. Hmm. This crack house a bar. Hellhole, a crack house. It smells like dog urine and soap. How the hell do you expect someone to feel comfortable in here? I'm surprised you decided to come to our little crack house after all, mister. What the hell do you care? The payment registry says... Sorry for the question then, Mr. Ingram McDougall. Ingram. Ingram? That's a weird fucking name. Sorry about the smell. We're working on fixing it. There was an incident over the weekend. But it's Tuesday. Um, please, let me know what I can do to make your experience more pleasant, pleasant regardless. If I pay you, will you come with me to a motel for a couple of hours? Listen, listen here, Ingram. You're gonna get punched in the face. <laughs> no. Then I have no use for you beyond giving me drinks. Such pleasant clientele tonight. May I ask why you decided to come to our bar then? Somebody recommended me this place and I have absolutely no idea why she likes it. She says she's a regular here and all. I'm starting to doubt her tastes. A regular? Can I ask who? No. <laughs> I'll concede one thing. Whoever picks the music at least has decent taste. Oh, He likes the music. I chose chill vibes. Hey Jill, where'd you put the dish so Jill's run out? Below the sink where it's always been? Right. Oh, a customer. Good evening, sir. Hope you enjoy your stay at Valhalla. So, any other feedback you want to provide the establishment so we can enhance your customer experience? No, nothing. That's an interesting change of heart. I can't afford to slander this place knowing she's here. You know my boss? I don't know her, but I know who she is. Donna Zane, the Red Comet. The woman who fended off mall rioters all by herself, knocking them out cold one by one. That's an achievement and a title I've never heard before. I know Boss did quite a few things before opening his bar, but that sounds... Would you happen to know how she got her mechanical arm? She has a mechanical arm. I heard a couple of stories, but they sound too fantastical to be true. I meant um, <laughs> You've had an interesting change of attitude. I saw that woman take out armed rioters with her bare hands. Once you see something like that, it's hard not to keep your mouth shut in front of them. Interesting. You can relax though. I've only seen her deal with clients personally about two or three times. One involved classifier weaponry, and the other one a pickup artist, and the latest had an alpaca. An alpaca? Not really an alpaca, but... There's this woman that owns a textile company. She got really drunk, and she started screaming she was an alpaca. She started spitting on everything afterwards, my boss had to show her the accent. I'd rather not remember that night, so let's leave it at that. Can I get you anything else? Give me a pile driver, please. Please, there's a word I haven't heard today. <laughs> Coming right up. He wants a pile driver. I honestly feel like suplexing him though. <laughs> He's not that bad. He's just an edgelord. And we're not gonna make this one big. Unos dos tres cuatros. All mixed. Pile driver. Here. Hmm, it's fine I guess. Hey lady, have you ever faked an orgasm? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I heard wrong. <laughs> I, I asked if you've ever faked an orgasm. That's a question I'm not gonna answer. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> I was just thinking about how good a lie can be. I mean, even the most sincere people lie once in a while. Lies can buy you time. Lies can make you happy. Reality will come crashing through the door eventually, but for that moment, the lie can give meaning to you. My fucking god. Dude, are you okay? Do you wanna boop boop talk about it? Boop. <laughs> <laughs> 
I say liars are like your porn stars. You know, they exist but you shouldn't acknowledge them. Does that mean you've really faked orgasms? Because you look like you've had a lot of experience. <laughs> On <laughs> Still, that's quite the random thoughts I just ha suddenly have. Are you perhaps lying about something right now? Not really, I was just thinking about people making polite comments about this crack house. <sighs> of course you were. Hey, I'm gonna need another drink here. Already? Don't you think you do drinking a bit quickly? That's my problem, not yours. Give me a fringe weaver. Alright. Fringe weaver, fringe weaver, fringe weaver. Uh, no, no. Unos. Next strong. I think. Oh my god, this is really. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh. Uh, aged. Uh, boop. Try not to drink it too fast. But it's up to me. Hey, lady. Have you ever felt empty? Empty how? Like hungry? No, I mean, empty like there's a part of me missing. I won't say I particularly have. I just feel there's this part of myself that lacks something. This guy is very edgy. <laughs> I like his little neck thing though. Is he like a cyborg? He might be a cyborg. <sighs> An urge to get or do something that I just can't satisfy. Have you tried taking up a hobby? It might not solve your problems, but it might keep you busy enough to avoid thinking about it. Any suggestions? Well, collecting stuff, reading, bungee jumping, combat sports, exercising... Sounds a lot cheaper than the alternative. Which is... Bitches and alcohol. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Damn right, brother. <laughs> I tried sex tourism once. It was like a bloody Russian roulette of STDs, so I left on midway through. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I once burned my Christmas bonus hiring three women for an orgy. Porn is more amusing and way cheaper. I've also hired a girl to act like my daughter for a day for three years in a row now. Nothing seems to do it. <coughs> You're a bit weird. <laughs> um. Have you tried rescuing a puppy? You can't fuck puppy. Okay. <laughs> At least you shouldn't. <laughs> fuck no. This guy has like one crazy sex drive. I'm drawing a blank then. Can't think of anything that might help. I wasn't expecting you to help me or to believe me. Eh. I could have been lying through my teeth this whole time. This guy's too woke. He's way too fucking woke and way too weak. People lie at lady. Unf. Anyway, I'm leaving now. This smell is killing me. Please come again. Don't count on it. Good. <laughs> Siren are a bit. Phew. Boss, I'm gonna take my break. Alright. Hmm. Time to pump the bartender action. Um, oh, this is really cute. Let's save. I don't think I've made any. Oh. Oh. I don't think I've made any sort of fucking. <sighs> Have I been playing for an hour? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, um, I think this will be it for today, my guys. So, uh, sayonara, and I will see you in the, the next...